Anastasia, Book 1, Chapter 23 Through a Window of Time Anastasia, if you are so smart and omnipotent, that means you could help me. She looked up at the sky and then again at me. In the whole of the universe, there is no being capable of more powerful development and greater free freedom than man. All other civilizations bow before man. All sorts of civilizations have the capability of developing and bringing themselves to perfection, but only in one direction. And they are all, and they are not free. Even the greatness of man is beyond their grasp. God, the great mind, created man, and to no one else gave he more than to man. I could not make sense, <laughs> at least right off, of what she was saying. And again, I uttered the same question, pleading for help, not fully understanding what kind of help I need. She asked me, what is it that you have in mind? Do you want me to cure all your physical ailments? That is a simple matter for me. I already did this six months ago. Only in the principal area of need, no benefit came about. The dark and destructive elements, common people of your world, have not lessened in you. And your various aches and, pain, aches and pains are trying to come back again. You witch, mad woman hermit, get out of of here this instant you're probably thinking right yes I answered in amazement that is exactly what I was thinking you read my mind I surmise that that is what you might be thinking indeed it is written all over your face tell me about me Vladimir do you not well remember me at least a little? The question dumbfounded me, and I began careful, carefully examining her facial features, especially her eyes. I really began to think that I might have seen them somewhere before, but where? Anastasia, you said yourself, that you spend all your time in the forest. How then could I have seen you? She gave me a smile and ran off. A short while later, Anastasia came out from behind the bushes, dressed in a long skirt, a brown button cardigan, her hair down up in a shawl, but without the quilt, quilted jacket in which she had greeted me on the riverbank and the shawl was tied differently. Her clothes were clean, though not stylish, and her shawl covered her forehead and neck, and I remembered her.